Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And today we're here with a little cover make or a harvesting session, should we say. Now, if you're watching this video, you've obviously discovered the playlist I've got that I created to try and help those who are beginning to make their own journey journals. Um, we've already done things like this. We've done um, fabric type stuff. We've I think this was a cereal box. This was craft card. This was card as well. So we, we've done some basics and that was the only intent of this playlist was to put you on the journey. I'm by no way an expert in journal making. There are things I've just discovered along the way and there are more than enough videos out there showing you how to go on and further make exquisite and elaborate journals. Now in this video I wanted to show you how to maybe harvest a resource you might not notice because we're coming up to the Christmas season. So before we start in this video I'm only making covers I'm not sewing anything in because, as you've already seen by umpteen videos, we've already sewn in stuff. You've seen different methods of sewing in. You've seen different styles of sewing in. You've seen different styles of signatures. We haven't really touched on ephemera or anything. I might do that next year. So, And if you want to see how any of these made, all of these are in the playlist um, and you will see them if you do a little bit of research. So let's put these by and talk about what we're going to do. <coughs> As Christmas is coming up, or the holiday season, um, I'm not sure about other religions as to when their seasonal celebrations fall and what the gifting and receiving is about. So I will just stick with the Christmas season as I know it. Um, you will get these things, gift bags. You'll end up with some of them because in this day and age, a lot of people will just buy a gift bag because it's far easier to use a gift bag than it is to wrap it. Although some people get vast amount of enjoyment out of wrapping a parcel and giving it as a gift and everyone to their own. But we always know these are too good to throw away. So we put them in our bottom drawer or they put them with our Christmas stuff and hopefully can recycle them next year. But there are other things you can do with these. Now, the way gift bags are made is they're usually quite robust. They're usually more robust than um, the paper or the card you would find in a paper pad. And they're usually highly decorative on both the inside and the outside. So I want to show you how I personally um, take one of these to pieces and what I can manufacture from one of these. So first things first, let's have a look. Okay. So I've got ribbons here. Let's pull the ribbons out. So the ribbons could easily be recycled in the future to be ties on a journal or maybe ties on a tag, something along those lines. So never overlook at ribbon or ties when it comes to gifts that you receive. Have a quick look, have a look and see what they've done. Also, if you've had something flump from a florist, always look, you never know what little secrets strips of hessian or burlap that have been used in them. All very, very good things to do. Now, the first thing I need to do is open this up. Now, for me personally, I struggle cutting a straight line with the scissors along here. So I will come in and I will work in a different way. Now, I tend to use a knife. You can use the scissors by all means, and you can use a guillotine, whichever you use, I'll be using a guillotine or um, a trimmer later on. Now, I know from the start this area here is going to be redundant. I'm never going to be using it. I have choices. I can either tear it open here or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down and slice down this edge. Now I'm using a metal ruler and I do recommend if you're using a sharp blade fully concentrate on doing it. Um, there are rulers out there made of metal that have a middle partition to them so that you'll protect your fingers even more. But I'm a qualified chef and I feel that although I'm not impervious to accidents, um, I'm qualified enough to handle a knife. So what I've done is I've sliced that down there. That will separate the front panel to give me some sort of way of operating here. Now in here you're going to find, even though you don't have the outside, you do have the colored papers in here. So it's another thing to consider, especially if you're going to be making tucks or corner pieces for your journals, always good little things to find. So I'm just going to open this up this side <clears throat> and again, come down with a sharp blade. I'm a great believer that a sharp blade 
is not what you're going to cut yourself with. It's going to be a blunt blade. So I'm starting to open this up as you can see. I'm starting to get to a place where I can work. So I think, I think I'm just going to come in with the scissors, the biggest scissors in the world, and I'm just going to snip along here. Now I'm not going to try and snip along this edge because to be honest with you, I will never make a good job of it. So I'm just going to snip that along there just so I've got this in some way that I can flatten it out and have a look. Now, the pieces I'm more interested in are the longer pieces to start with because that in itself is a journal cover. I haven't yet measured it yet, but that bit is possibly a journal cover. We've got nice interesting bits for pockets and tags and stuff, but we need to do one more thing. We need to open this up fully. So let me just come in with my knife, take this piece off here, and we will look through all of the pieces I cut off by the end of this because there are things I will mention that you can look at and do with these. So we'll look at that in a minute. Nothing goes in the trash here except maybe this bit because I don't need that bit. I'm going to come in and do exactly the same along here and take that bottom edge off. Now of course gift bags don't just go at Christmas, they're for pretty much any celebration you can think of and I'm always really grateful when someone sends me one because you know what, it's free cardstock. So I'm going to come down now, if you look at bags you'll usually find it's made from one continuous piece that will have a join somewhere and the join is usually discreetly hidden so that you will find it, that's not a folder bag, you would find it within this fold so that's the one I'm going to slice down. I'm going to literally take the edge off here just so I've got a working a working area to come on. There you go, right. So now we can really look at the body of what I've got in front of me. So I've got some very pretty paper on the inside. It has almost a waxy quality, this paper, because it's meant to be I wouldn't say waterproof, but at least showerproof, because um, the manufacturer of these knows that maybe one day you'll be walking through the rain to deliver a present. Now this area here, I can open this up. I do have a few holes in this. It doesn't bother me. I can always cover them up. Um, I'm just going to come in with the scissors now just to trim off that edge, because it's one piece I don't necessarily need on here. I'm not worried about this being too straight at this point. As long as I don't encroach on that pattern, I don't mind. Because when I come to doing the trimming of it down to size, I will definitely, definitely be using my guillotine. And once I've got one straight edge, then of course I can do several straight edges. So I'll just snip that bit off. There you go. Now again, I'm not throwing that out because this colour goes with this bag. So I may need this as a scrap for something in the future. It's not going to take up that much space. Now, there is a join here. There's an overlap here. I'm going to just get rid of this whole piece here. I'm just going to move that over and I'm going to slice this bit off with my knife. Just so that, again, I've got rid of the bits that are not usable. I'm going to keep that, however, because again, it could become part of a cluster, could be part of a trim, anything. Right. Now, the main panel is the front panel. When I say the front panel, I meant the front panel of the bag. That panel is the one that's got the least folds in it. So next on my list is I'm going to harvest this one off here. Now, I'm sure someone else out there has done this. So if you are going to be doing this sort of thing, I would always do some form of search to find out whether or someone's done this before. Sure they have. Have a look around, see what they've got. So I've got the basis now of one piece. Now all of these pieces have folds in them. Um, I don't want to get rid of everything because I know that I can use it for something. So I'm going to cut the panels down now in other ways. So I'm just going to take the folding bits off. Hopefully all of this makes sense, guys. Um, also remember I cannot tell you what the quality of the bag is that you're going to have, so always make your own judgment call. So I'm going to take this piece off here because it's not that effective for what I'm looking to use it for. So, but it is a good bit of um, 
cardstock that I can use maybe for something else. We'll take a look at that as we go along. So put that under my pile of pieces. Let's take this piece off here because it is similar to the one I've just cut off. So right. So I've now got myself some panels and I've got this panel here which I think is going to have to come off as well. Right, so let's put, put all the scrap bits that I've got to one side. We will look at those, but now let's look at what we've got here. So let's start with the biggest piece. Excuse my arm and my reach. So this is the biggest piece I've got. Now my journal covers, as you've seen um, in this playlist, are normally 12 by um, 9 or 12 by 8.5. So if I look, what have I got here? This is... 13 so that's a good thing 13 by 10 and a half so I can actually come in here and know that yay I've got a good a good amount of card to work on so go bring in my trimmer now first thing I do is I'm going to make one of these sides straight and by straight I mean I'm going to cut it straight with a guillotine so that I've not got any deviation everything is going to be started on this line so I'm going to come in let's see how long did I say this was so we're well over well over the mark that I need which is 12 so I can probably where the holes are these holes are I'm going to take it just to the very edge of those I'm going to line those holes up just off it comes this little strip again can be used for something else. So now I've got the straight edge. So I know that my cover needs to be nine inches tall. The height of the cover is completely up to what you want. So I'm looking at this. I'd rather maintain this bit here and maybe lose that butterfly off there because it's already cut. So that will become the center panel. So to get this straight, this is the edge I cut. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna bring it under here to nine inches. <clears throat> Cut that piece off. So I've now got a piece that's nine inches tall. It's still too long because it's almost 12. So let's pull this in to a 12. There you go. So now we have our nine by 12 piece. Fabulous. So if this is nine by 12, I know that if I pull in my scoreboard and I'm gonna select my front, which I think is gonna be this one because I managed to maintain the butterfly. Obviously I could turn it up the other way if I wish. Um, because I want my valley as a groove of a score of valley, I'm gonna make that the bend as a spine. So I know that I'm coming into six inches here. So I'm gonna score a line down there for six inches. Fold that over, score that, and that will give me one cover. It's already decorated inside now. It's quite good solid cardstock. I could line this with another piece of card if I want. I could mod podge this, I could seal this, but you know, for a quick little journal, that's a really good start. And as you can see, with some of the other journals, I mean, you put book corners on it and it's done. I mean, this one's slightly different size. This is a bigger piece of card, but this will give me my normal folded pieces of paper sewn into there will give me a good journal cover. So let's put that to one side. So that's one journal cover. Now, what have I got left here? Let's put this out of the way. Now this is the other piece. Now I'm actually not overly bothered by the holes because I can always put ephemera on there in some way. So this one is 10 and a bit by 10. It's about 10 and a half square. So let's see if I could still keep it at nine. And if I took this down to 10, I'd have to trim my pages down. So let's just have a little bit of a think. So where's it gone? So this is the size that I normally make my um, traveler's notebooks out of. And that is normally 
eight and a half by nine. So I can actually get a traveler's notebook out of this. So eight and a half by nine. So let's bring this one in. So I think that already feels like a straight edge. So let's have a look, quick look. Right, if I straighten this edge up again, let's see if I've got enough room to do what I want to do. Yes, if I come in just below those holes in the cover, if I take those off. So, this is the orientation of their book, or this is the orientation. I like the butterfly to be that way up. So I've got my straight edge up there. So I've got nine inches is what I need. So I think I'm going to take a little bit off either end and that way I know that both ends are perfectly vertical. So that gives me nine inches width. Now what did I say the height was? Eight and a half. <clears throat> so let me just check something one minute. I don't know why I'm doubting myself, but this is actually one of mine. See, that's eight and a quarter. I think I'm still going to stay with eight and a half because this is what I normally make my ones out of. But as um, a traveler's notebook, I'm not, I can't remember if it's eight and a quarter or eight and a half off the top of my head. Right, I think I've done that right now. That's the trouble with me. When I stop to think about things, that's when things go wrong. So we now have a piece that is nine inches by eight and a half. So that means I have to score a line at four and a half inches. So let's flip this over. Four and a half, give it a bit of a fold, give it a bit of a score. They got a really easy little cover there. This one would be the same as that one, slightly bigger, but I like I like the larger size. I think I've used this size because that's the size of the holder that my Midori is or my Traveler's Notebook cover. So there you go. So that's another one done. Now, when it comes to the remaining things, it's completely up to you, obviously, what you wish to do with them. I was looking at these earlier, trying to work out, okay, what would I do? Now, this one is quite equal in size, as you can see. I mean, it wouldn't take much to trim that to the right size. If I was to cut that, let's just, just do it. So I'm busily chopping when I can actually be chopping. So, right, so if I take this piece, it's already folded in half. It's already got a score line in it. Let's take that off there. Give myself a bit of a clean up on the top edge. Bit of a clean up on the bottom edge. Now this was the piece, remember, that came from the side of the bag or the, um, what's it called? I'll call it the gutter. Okay, 10 inches. So if I come in and I do this at five inches, that will give me two little um, notebooks. So if I actually then put some pages into there, whether I glued them or I sewed them, those would make great little notebooks for a gift that could actually be slipped into a journal as well. Now let's look at this one. Now this one is slightly different because it had the fold over on it. I'm not going to be able to um, do the same thing with this one, but I do have an idea. So I'm going to bring this edge in, the shorter edge, Try and line it up so that the crease gives me what I need to cut it. Again, just going to leave that to one side a second. So this gives me this piece. I want to do a better job of that cut. I don't like that cut. And let's just flip it around so that I've got... Let's take the edge off this. Just want to get a straight edge to work upon. Now, now I've got a nice strip. Now, this could be a belly band in the journal, but I've got another idea for it. So is this about 10 as well? 
about 10. So let's come into five. So now that I've got this, I could actually make a little notebook fold with it. So if I come in and I take this over the top, fold that bit down. I could have used a score tool, but I didn't. I just decided to do it this way. Again, if I just fold that over. And then all I can do is I could get some little spare strips of paper. Let's see if I can find some. Uh, plain papers. Oh, there you go. Let's just drag my drawer out. So take this out of the way and put that down there. <clears throat> so if I went through here, now this, this is sort of an impromptu thing here, so I haven't planned this one ahead, as you can see. Right, I've got some strips here. Okay, so if I had strips of paper like this, these are obviously offcuts of something. If I fold those in half, where's a bit of a pencil for me? Right, let's do that. Let's put this one to one side because you don't see the same process twice. Let's bring my guillotine. Right. Let's take that off there. And where's the other mark gone? There you go. Now as anyone who watches Gail Augustinelli, you'll know that these little strips will get put to one side, be stamped on uh, to make labels. That's exactly what I do as well. So coming in here now, I can just take this little bit, slip this in here. Is that a fly? I think a fly just flew through. So therefore I could just come in, staple those down, see if I can find a stapler. So I don't have one of the tiny Tim Holtz attachers. I just have a regular run of the mill stapler. If I just staple that in the middle, I can come over the top of here and I could just stick that down with a little bit of glue, which, where's my glue gone? There you go. Just a little bit of, I'm using art, art glitter glue here purely because it's the first one that came to hand. Please excuse the sunlight shining through. It's just what it is, and I'm not going to complain about that today. Just leave that there, put that on top of that for a second, just put the lid on top of my glue. So, obviously, straight away there, we've made a little pad as well. Oh, there you go. I don't know why I can't get that stuck in there. So this could be just a little note tablet that could be stuck into a book, and because you've stuck this down on the top page, it'll still open up for writing. That's something you would tuck into a journal as well. So let's move that to one side, get this to one side. Now if we take a look at the pieces of the left and I talk you through what I think they should be, then that will be an easy thing to think about. So we have a strip here. This strip could easily become a belly band in a journal. You would just need to cut it down to size. So let's just grab, grab a journal. Okay, using a basic journal page. Come on, Mr. Journal page, there you go. So I would use this, I could stick this down the center of the page, sticking it top and bottom. That will give me a journal, a belly band, and I could slip things in. It could also become a side pocket if I then s stuck it down three sides. I've got a tuck spot there, so that's a useful piece for me. Now, when it comes to these ones, I know you're probably going to, what would I use that for? So let's cut along the nice little joins that they've already got in this. Take that little bit out of the way. Just tidy this down a bit. There you go. Sorry, quiet for a second. So I've got the two bits. So these could become corner tucks. If I was to stuck, stick that on that side and that side, I've actually got an area that I could stick something in there with. So again, I've given myself two tuck spots there. Let's get a bit of stuff out of there. Now, these little pieces, you can always use things like scraps. They're a bit thick for collage, but you know what? You could always use them for doing clusters of stuff. So that's a bit of a no brain piece. Um, little strips, strips are always handy. They're great for putting bits of decorative stuff. So if I had a tag and I was put a piece of that down the side of it, that would carry the theme through as well. Let's see. 
Okay, this one here, quite a large piece. I mean, I'm not going to do all the neat trimming, but if I was to actually, just as an example, if I was to cut the side off that and I come in and I take the top off, turn the top around, that top corner, snip it on the other side, I've then made a tag. My choice whether I want to back it or not, you could write on that. That gives you a tag that's in the theme of the cover. This could be a journal card, anything like that. They're good expanses of real estate. There's another piece I could harvest two more of those corner pieces from. And then we've got little strips. Little strips are always easy. If you've got just a regular, where have I got one? Say I've got a tag. Okay, this is a pre-made tag that I've got. If I was to actually just put something like that along the bottom there, and if I was to stick it down there, there, and along the bottom, I could then have a space where I could tuck something into here. It would just carry the theme through of the entire journal. So the only bits we really have our little strips and pieces you could make quite easily clusters and stuff like this we have this piece here now I wouldn't generally think this was of use but you know if I harvest these strips out of here these could be little accent pieces throughout the entire journal if I so wish and when we look at the very base of it if I pull this bit off Guess what? I've got more pieces here. So it depends on how you want to harvest something, guys. But um, when you reckon you wouldn't... Oh, there you go. Even the piece that was on the base is quite handy because I could use that back that and collage onto that. So we've taken one gift bag. And from the one gift bag, I've made two covers for notebooks and all I would do is I would get some plain papers or coffee dyed papers fold them you could sew them in there and you've got two little notebooks that are great for maybe a handbag or a wallet or something you could tuck into a journal um, we've harvested these little pieces and I've shown you quite quickly you can make little notebooks out of these so these little notepads can just be slid into a journal We've made a journal cover that's equally the size of a traveller's notebook. You could just make it into your December daily if you wish. And then we've got one big journal um, cover or what I would call a regular size journal cover. And as I said, they're quite robust. It's quite a thick material. If you wanted, you could easily line this with another thing, another piece of card. Um, because it's quite robust, you could sew around the outside. You could take, where are they? Sorry, struggling to find the bits I was talking about. Strips like this, you could put those down the inside of each side and it will be a tucked spot there for a pocket. Just stuff, there's so many things you can do with a gift bag, guys. Okay, so things like this, however, are probably gonna hit the trash but only after I've harvested pieces out of here. Say you've got a tag punch or something, or a tab for the edges of pages, don't forget to harvest these bits out with a punch. All of it's really useful. So, hopefully that was okay, guys. It was a bit of a quick video, but I wanted to make sure that you're aware of, as you're receiving gifts throughout the year or at Christmas time, don't overlook things like these bags. They're really robust. They're good quality cardstock. Um, it's down to your judgment, obviously. You choose whichever you want. They come in bright sparkly. Some of them have words on them. Um, I always look for ones that have got multi-directional patterns on them. If it's something that says Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday on it, obviously you're going to have to deal with that wording or utilise it and make a birthday journal or make a December daily Christmas journal out of it for the following year. So hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. That was me just sharing a little bit of knowledge with you this time. Um, and I will speak to you next time. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.